Every three years, the best sailors on the planet compete in the world's toughest offshore challenge, the Volvo Ocean Race. One, two, go! Stance. For the 12th edition, seven teams left Alicante, Spain to cross four oceans and five continents over nine months. It is the ultimate endurance test that all professional sailors dream of doing. It's just relentless. With a fleet solely composed of the Volvo Ocean 65, a boat designed to take on the most grueling offshore race. Crews are pushed to the limit in a competition that has never been closer. Battling 24-7, fighting storms, and defying the worst that Mother Nature can throw at you. You get a beating out there. Pushing the crews to a place where there is only a thin margin between winning the leg. Fantastic, we're on, we're on top of the world. So proud of my team. Hey, in the bed. First win. Nice, very nice. Or losing it all. I can't believe this. I can't actually believe this happened. This is their story. The fourth leg of the Volvo Ocean Race is a varied one. After the heavy weather in the South China Sea, the teams are now sailing through the Pacific Ocean, crossing the equator, and approaching the intertropical convergence zone. Right on. More commonly called the doldrums, it's a place notorious for its lack of wind, where anything can happen. Miles away from the race, Team SCA Bauman Sophie is in her own personal doldrums, still not knowing what will be the outcome of her injury that took her off the boat. Since being back here, the closest I can be to the ocean is on the beach or in the, in the surf. Um, I haven't been allowed to surf or sail, so coming down the beach has been one of the nicest things I've been doing. Um, yeah, and getting back in the ocean and swimming has been good, but yeah, it's not as good as being in the race, I guess. The last six weeks, I've been just trying to get better, get my back recovered so that I can get back in the race, and it's been pretty tough. Being a spectator for me is like the worst thing ever. I got off in Abu Dhabi and missed that leg to Sanya, and now I'm missing another leg, so it's, it's been pretty hard, and mentally it's been challenging to think how I can get back to being that fit again and strong and able to Sail. Like I've quite often had thoughts like, oh, I don't, I don't think I could ever sail again. Um, but I'm slowly getting there. Ultimately, I, you know, I want to do the, the leg from Auckland to Brazil. It's, it's the one I really want to do, and it's a goal that's doable. I'm on track as far as my recovery. I'm now back in the gym, trying to get fit again and strong. And yeah, hopefully it all goes to plan. To recover from her back injury, Sophie is undergoing an intense physiotherapy routine. Hi, Vicky. Hey, yes, Hi. Come in. Okay. How have you been? Pretty good. Okay. Been shunted at all? Um, this morning, no. Okay. And less pain. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Pressure is, is time, not so much from the recovery. I mean, six weeks, six or eight weeks with the type of surgery she's had, you would expect her to have good recovery. But to be physically recovered in, in a rehab sense, to be able to withstand the rigours of what she's going to do on, on the boat, that that's, has been the challenge. It's uh, steady as she goes in the progression. You're not wanting to say this was too much by looking back and saying that was too much. You want to do it more gradually so you're fairly confident she's doing okay. Slide your right hand down. Not bad, but sore? Mm, just on the side. Okay, so right stretching. Right side's fine. Okay, go to the left. She's got two weeks up her sleeve before she goes to Auckland, but I think from there there's probably another three weeks before the boat then leaves. So she's got five more weeks up her sleeve. Uh, I think that's quite realistic that she's going to make that time frame. Engage, push, slowly back. Okay, and push. Being back on the boat is 
really physical, um, especially when you're in rough conditions and big waves and windy stuff. The boat, you know, you're living on a boat that's on a 20 degree angle, uh, going off waves, wind in your face. You're constantly moving. You're not sleeping properly. You're eating to make sure you've got enough energy. And then my job as a bowman, I'm constantly underwater, lifting heavy sails. You know, I'm never on flat ground. I'm balancing while I'm doing my job, so it's, it's intense. <laughs> it also can be scary at times, and it's not an ideal world for anyone who's got a bad back. Everyone wants me back on the boat, and in my mind I want to be back on the boat and go sailing, but number one is fixing my back and getting my back right, because I don't want to be on the boat if I can't you know, if I think I'm going to hurt it again or if I'm on the boat and I'm, you know, worried about not doing my job properly. So I'm just going week by week or day by day, really. Now yeah, squat right. down and that shouldn't change. Doesn't and come change. up. Hey? Is that good? Yeah. Being away from the sea has been tough for Sophie, but being back at home has softened the blow. Just hanging out down here with my mum and dad today and quite a few of our friends have boat sheds along here as well, so... We know pretty much everyone down here, it's good. We're loving having her home, that's for sure. Yeah, really love it. And, but feel really bad for her that she's not out there with the girls. When she came home, she seemed, uh, yeah, pretty uh, sore and everything. But I think uh, she's coped really well. She's got a really good attitude. Um, she's been very positive and been working really hard to uh, get fit again and strong. Rest up a bit. <laughs> as much as Sophie can. With the start of the leg in just over three weeks, the pressure on the family is palpable. I want it to happen for her, absolutely, yeah. We're pretty keen to make sure that she gets back on the boat. But I, I want her to be safe, that's the main thing, and I want her, her health's the main thing. Yes, we're worried, but she, she sort of knows her own body well enough, I think, and hopefully will pull back and not give it 120%. With the big decision resting in her team's hands, Sophie is getting ready to join them in Auckland. Back on the water and with time on their hands between clouds, the sailors can take a break to enjoy some celebrations. Today is Azam skipper Ian Walker's birthday. I'm 35 years old, can you believe it? 35? 45. Maybe I'm 45. I've got a joke for you. Why are pirates so scary? I'm not sure why. Because they are! Just ahead of them is Dong Fong race team, and their skipper Charles, by pure coincidence, will be celebrating his birthday a day later. I've got a nice email from Charles. Apparently he's been trying to radio us to wish me a happy birthday. I just learned that it's your birthday. Tomorrow is mine. We are nearly twins except a few years of difference, sorry. I tried to call you on channel 16 for an happy birthday, but no answer. So unfortunately, I will have to protest against you for not keeping watch on channel 16. We told him to just take it easy in case he breaks something on his boat. Thanks for the birthday wishes. My team gave me a captain's hat which I have been work, wearing probably all day. I like the summer. Sorry, I forget to wish you a, a happy birthday for tomorrow. Maybe you should take the day off. Cheers, Jan. At sunrise, it's Charles's turn to open his present. You <laughs> 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 got a, a, a captain hat? Nah. Ah. <laughs> Yours, it's a YMCA one. Yeah, yeah. So today is my birthday. One year ago, I was 40. It was a day of the where we launch a boat. I receive uh, the, for gifts. I receive uh, this boat. Uh, the other way. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So yeah, happy birthday for you. I receive the same kind of gifts than you. So I think we are ready to make a boys band in o'clock. The friendly cello. So 41 on Dong Fong Race Boat in the middle of the lake four. 
leading the fleet. That's a nice gift for a sailor <laughs> like me. Unfortunately, Charles's mood soon changes. Just going through a bit of a bit of a cloudy patch before we can escape into the, uh, the sort of a bit more stable easterly trades. Uh, Pat Brace coming down in a cloud. Well, Dong Feng are having a tough time of it down there in a uh, in another cloud, and uh, and we're sort of nestled between the two. You blokes are dead right about that cloud. They are in trouble down there. Dong Feng have just got ruined in a cloud. I think we're now in the lead. We are now in the lead. A bit of knock on wood too, man. <laughs> Not sure for how long. Charles's birthday, he won't be enjoying it very much. We are, we are stuck in the wind between two clouds and we've got uh, Abu Dhabi and Mafre uh, windward going fast in, uh, with the wind of the cloud. For the Spanish team, it's a great opportunity. Since the beginning of the race, it's the first time they're maintaining their position in the leading pack. Yesterday we didn't have a very good day and we lost a little bit of ground with these guys. And uh, this morning they were 13 and 15 miles in front of us. And uh, this afternoon it's been just crazy with clouds and squalls. And, and right now they appear again. There's Abu Dhabi here in our beam in three miles and Don Fen still with no wind, so so it's good. Uh, it's hopefully we can uh, keep fighting all the way to the finish and of course uh, don't forget the guys coming from behind. They're still uh, a bit faster than us and they making the distance shorter. The unpredictable wind means that even for the boats further behind, the race for the podium is not over yet. Under uh, 200 miles to go until we get to New Zealand, and you know, the sail changes and crossovers. We've done a lot of them in the last 24 hours. It's been quite shifty and puffy. We were doing 20 knots a couple of hours ago on the jib, and now we're uh, under the fro and about to peel to the masthead. So, um, you know, all these maneuvers are, you know, make or break a mile or two here or there, and that could be the difference at the finish. So we got to keep pushing to the end. The next few hours are going to be key to the finish of the race. Team Brunel is having a hard time, from being leader to the back of the fleet. It's not a nice feeling, but a sweetener may lift spirits. No! Nobody can make me happy, Stefan. Not even you. Leave me alone. Why? I want to be alone. I mean, you can sit, but not with the camera. A little bit down. Because we were doing really great and then we, uh, we messed it up from yours to zeros and uh, yeah, we were even fighting for uh, not to get lost so I still see you. Doesn't count. Fighting the elements is for the guys of course always tough. But if the results are disappointing, it might be even tougher. So they need a little bit happy feeling. So we're gonna make chocolate mousse. Let's go. Nice. It just sad. Sad reason. Okay, here we have some happiness. <sighs> it's proper mousse. Look at this. Look at this. This is good for the spread. Much better. Ooh. Makes me happy to to be part of this crew, of this team. The spirit on board is still is still good, and no one is blaming anyone. One day closer to my family. Tell me about your daughter. She's the best in the world. I'm gonna see her one and a half day. <laughs> I've certainly seen her before New Year's. It's pretty good. You see, you're happy already. I'm going now. Fox, you noticed there's a big change in mood on the board suddenly. Wow, it's chocolate mousse, you think? The chocolate mousse, man. 
apple vanilla custard would be nice if you made me that and a coffee with a little bit of chocolate powder in it on top. I think it should be this every day. Auckland, New Zealand is the fifth port to welcome the 12th edition of the Volvo Ocean Race. With the fleet less than a day from arriving, the race village is in full swing. The shore teams are arriving to be ready for their boats. For Maria Bertrand, it's not only her team that she needs to be ready for, but also to welcome her husband back. Right now I'm really tired because it's been yeah, a really long flight from, from Spain with the little one, but really excited to be here. Um, last time we were here three years ago, it was a great stopover and the boats are doing really well, so excited to see sci-fi and excited to see Mafre up in the lead as well. Right now it's making sure he, he gets his bed sorted and all his toys out of the bag and then see if he, he falls asleep tonight and have a good, try and have a good rest for, for tomorrow, so we better go. Vamos. After a good sleep, Maria is organizing her life as a mum and a full-time working member of the Matfrey team. Hola! Actually, here in the stopovers, it's much easier to be able to do everything because um, Simona is here. Um, she's been, she travels around the around the world as well with her husband, who's a sailmaker on the say on the boat yard. Um, so it makes it easier actually because I arrive, then I switch into work mode because she's full time with him, and then when I get back to the hotel or to the apartment, then I switch into being a wife or mum again. Time is running out as the three leading boats, Abu Dhabi, Dongfeng and Matfrey, are now only a few hours away. It's a bit difficult, especially now that Abu Dhabi and Matfrey are so close to each other. Um, all the other stopovers, there was a bit of a separation, so I could see Sci-Fi arrive and be with him, be the family, and then have time to prepare the next arrival and then be full on with Mafra when they arrive and this is going to be the first time that actually both boats arrive really close so that's going to be a, a bit of a funny one we'll see how that one works I might have to be in the pontoon with the baby for both of them with Alexander in good hands Maria is heading off to the team base to get everything in order for the arrivals tomorrow as soon as we get the okay from the hotel we've got the okay at 12. Okay, so we can go at 12 o'clock, do the check-in and then put the keys in the welcome packs and, um, and just prepare everything, and everything else, basically. It's a Mexican standoff for the last few miles of the lake. Three boats are fighting closely for first place. After nearly 10,000 kilometers, the boats are still within sight of each other. Approaching New Zealand is key, as the slightest margin could make the difference. By going east, Mapfre gains some speed and takes the much sought after lead. It's going to be a tricky end to this leg. Um, certainly three boats in close proximity. Alva Medica have come and joined the party now, they're seven miles behind. See them all back there, Abu Dhabi, Dongfeng, Alva Medica. We've just recently made a little gain as we come into the pressure. They did come into us, but it's elastic really, compressions and extensions. So we uh, just got to work hard for the next 25 miles into the finish and um, fingers crossed. As the sun sets on the city of Sales, it's a dogfight for the last few miles between the leaders. Not giving up an inch of their lead, the Spanish team is finally rewarded with their first win of this race. Lake, especially the last 20 hours, we've been non sleep too long, and with the best boats of the fleet one mile behind us. So we are very happy. We push a lot as much as we can, and we have the, the result, which is first in Auckland, which is very special. You know? It's celebration time, but not just yet for Maria, as she needs to guide her joyful team through the paperwork. 
main stage over there. But because the bridge is quite full, you're going to get a green going to take you to the other side. You can do immigration there. Okay. So they'll have they just need the passport face to face and that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, very exciting to see Mafra finishing and Xavi leading the team to finally win, especially after the last few legs, which haven't been really good for the team. And then at the same time, it's quite, I don't know, hard to see Salfa finishing second after they've been first for so long, but it's good for the race and it's good for the team that we finish first and this way we had well, a winner, a different winner every leg. And with a few minutes to spare, Maria is back on the dock to welcome her husband home. Looking forward to seeing my family and uh, no, really happy with the result. Um, a pretty close sport battle, I think. You know, the guys have been saying we're closer, <laughs> closer now after uh, 5,000 miles or whatever than we were in our, after the inshore loop. So uh, yeah, we got a, a good result. Nice win for Matt Bray. Congratulations to them. But uh, yeah, we're very happy with second and uh, happy to get one over Don Frank. Last month felt like one of the longest in my life because uh, for a sort of rare occasion Maria wasn't in the stuff over with me so uh, yeah it's been about a month but it's great. Great to see my family, great to be here in Auckland and uh, looking forward to a, a good week off. It's good, the first few nights of a leg you'll, you'll never really sleep because you never know what's going to happen, especially the last one that it was so windy. But um, Lisa know that him being a navigator he spent a lot of time downstairs so that makes me feel a bit more comfortable. It's been a long month and it's really nice to see them together again and to have him safe, safe back on land. <laughs> Only a few minutes later, the Franco-Chinese team arrives to a very warm New Zealand welcome. It's not long before Team Alvi Medica arrives in a hard-earned fourth place. The boat behind us, they had a 100 mile lead at one stage and it's pretty fickle so um, happy with the fourth. Nice to be in New Zealand, nice to be in Auckland and uh, yeah, it's good. Then it's the turn of Team Brunel, who at one point were over 100 kilometres ahead of the pack. Unfortunately, even with some great navigation choices, the Dutch boat only finishes in fifth place. Oh, it has been a very good leg till uh, I think three quarters of the race and uh, then we made a bad decision and went from first to fifth and never could uh, come back and uh, yeah, of course it's always a bit sour especially I think we sailed, the guys did a fantastic job, they sailed really well, we took a lot of good decisions and we took one bad decision and that was, uh, that was basically the leg decider for us. Later that night, as Team SCA enter the harbour, there is one person really eager to meet her team. It's 4.30 in the morning and the girls are just across the finish line and uh, yes, it's crazy to see them again and see the boat and pretty excited but pretty early in the morning, been up all night waiting and uh, for me it's super exciting just to see them here and see everyone again and yeah, be back, be back in the team. I couldn't, I couldn't take my eye off the boat as they were coming in and we followed them from a few miles out and yeah, just, you know, watching the girls do every normal job there is to do on the boat, just, you know, wishing I was back on there doing it again. So yeah, no, super exciting and uh, yeah, go see the boat again, get familiar with everything and yeah, I want to be back on that thing. <laughs> Next week, Nick and the members of the boatyard are making sure that the boats are ready for the demanding leg to Brazil. The sailors are taking a well-deserved break. And Team SCA Bauman Sophie finally discovers if she will be back in the race.